right and left balancer removal and checking of the starter clutch. Um, right now, I've got the retaining bolt removed from my right balancer. Okay, we're right side of the case right now. And I noticed by checking ahead of time that it will not turn clockwise, but will turn counterclockwise, which of course now it's not going to do either for me, which is bad too. Uh, allegedly, what's supposed to happen is it's supposed to turn, uh, I believe it's counterclockwise, or clockwise freely and counterclockwise is supposed to lock up. In any event, if it locks up both directions, then that clutch mechanism in behind here is bad. And I'm going to screw this back in just long enough to put a wrench on it and check it again. Um, but then I'm going to pull it off and inspect that clutch. And I'll do some video uh, once I get that off in my hand if I find anything. Uh, I suspect I'm going to find something's wrong with it. Doesn't seem to be behaving itself. So, in any event, that's done. Uh, primary gears off, clutch baskets off, rotors off, left side balancer, bolt is also loose, ready for it to come off, and uh, just want to inspect that starter clutch deal and see what's going on with that real quick. May have an issue there. Okay, the starter gear and torque limiter have been removed, and inspected, disassembled. The one-way clutch, the manual mentions checking that it's you know able to rot, rotate clockwise, grabs counterclockwise. You can't do that with it installed. You've got to pull it off the shaft. Okay, because this is not going to work properly if it's engaged with the torque limiter. Because then you're fighting the starter gear itself. Okay? which also I think has a, uh, a paw that see it, it rotates one direction. No, it does rotate the other one too. But in any event, um, it will rotate in your hand clockwise and grab counterclockwise. Um, so let me just show you that real quick. I'm going to put this bearing back in. Or this is the clutch actually. And this you need probably two hands to do so I'm probably going to have to cut off my video for a second to seat that back in the weight. Uh, big washer goes in the bottom of it and then the gear itself flips over and into it. Okay, it has an inner sleeve, it has a needle bearing and then the outer sleeve so we have to inspect the races, inspect the needle bearing uh, and then check operation of the device as a whole. Uh, also check for chipped and damaged teeth. This is just a big old washer that sits on top of the torque limiter. Um, you check for damaged, broken, chipped teeth, teeth worn down to a nub. These teeth here that engage the, uh, the starter, those do have a fairly sharp uh, tip to them. I thought at first they were just really badly worn, but uh, it appears that that's actually just uh, a normal uh, wear pattern for that particular gear or a normal uh, grind if you will it's the way that they uh, grind those teeth is down to a much finer point than they do most of the other gears in the box so all of that is stripped off over on the other side of the case the left balancer is, gear is off And I suspect the next thing will be to remove uh, the starter, my oil pump flange right here, and then uh, I believe, oh, external shift mechanism cover and the external shift mechanism, which uh, really has been off before, but I was saving it so it's a lot easier to see when we pull that off. And then I think it's almost time to split the case. Okay, here's our uh, one-way clutch starter gear reassembled. I put it back together. The spray clutch, uh, which is inside the, the counterweight housing, you have to get it square on to 
he has to go into the weight housing. Okay, I used a piece of wood that was approximately the same distance, you know, from here to here. So I was applying pressure evenly across the entire um, clutch as I pressed it in. That allowed me to get it to go in. If you try to do it by hand, it keeps rocking on you. Won't give you the ability to do it. I wanted to point out it is indeed clockwise motion that is possible. I can get it to hold still. There we go. So clockwise in your hand, yes. Counterclockwise, no. Will not go counterclockwise. So that clutch is in good condition. You can't do that for whatever reason. I don't know if it's too much friction or there's something else going on inside my case here that I haven't discovered yet. Uh, but I cannot do that while it's mounted. But in my hand, that clutch is good. Needle bearing and center race. Ready to go back in. There we go. Perfect. I'll put that in the bag, label it. And that can sit until reassembly time. Teeth all look good. No problems there at all. Really nice. Needle bearings clean. The raceway is clean, so no worries about that at all. It's going to go back on later. Just wanted to show you that uh, as an assembly. Okay, left side of the crankcase oil pipe is removed. Please note that there is an O-ring here and an O-ring here. And those are going to get replaced, of course. All the rubber is going to get replaced. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull off the external shift mechanism uh, because it was already off before. So this should just wiggle right off to me. Perhaps not. I'm trying to remember how easily it came off. The external shift mechanism was where I was hoping to find uh, evidence of my reason for not being able to upshift. Okay, poof. External shift mechanism covers off. When you pull it off, be aware that on this shaft you have a washer that usually sticks to the inside of the cover. There she is. Okay, so keep an eye on that. Don't lose track of it. I'm going to put it back on the shaft here in a second. And this is where I was hoping to find my problem. I was hoping to find broken spring, a broken Paul stud, um, damage to the star wheel here, damage to the spring uh, for this part of the shift mechanism. And no luck. I mean, everything checks out. So that wasn't the problem. So that let me know that I wasn't going to get away with either just a simple clutch replacement or maybe a spring or something over here. So we're going to have to move on with uh, further disassembly and break down your engine, split your crankcase. So as long as I'm in it, in for a dime, in for a dollar, we'll go ahead and do a complete rebuild while we're at it. And why not make a YouTube video? Just to add to the flavor. Okay. Wanted to show you that before I actually disassemble the mechanism and started uh, separating the individual pieces. I wanted to catch a close-up of the spring engagement for this tension arm for the shifter, okay? I undid the bolt most of the way, scooted the arm out far enough that it would clear the face of the shifter star okay and then put it out of the way but before I pulled this out of the case I wanted to document the way this spring sits and how it engages the case because if you're like me you might look at that spring later and not remember exactly which way that spring went and now we got evidence of exactly how it goes probably have left it on the case but it would have been fighting it the whole way so that's now free poof my engine disappeared okay that's it off the bench in the pot on its side draining I've got the uh, oil filter oil screen I should say removed that was the last thing I pulled 
and it's laying on its side, draining through that hole, try and get as much oil out of it as possible before I throw it up here on the bench and commence to split the case, which will be tomorrow. And then we'll see what's going on inside there. 